Hey, how are you doing today? So I'm kind of excited uh, to be doing a council tool axe review. Um, I've gotten to be a pretty big fan. They're not always the uh, perfect axe, but um, we really get some uh, nice steel and some uh, definitely some American made pride into these axes. So let's go ahead. Uh, the one that I'm going to be actually reviewing and testing today is this uh, Jersey uh, axe and it's about three and a half pounds i'll get to the measurements in just a second i have uh, three other council tool axes actually laid out here and the one that we're going to be testing is actually a little bit of an older model of the jersey um, i believe that all the new ones just over about the last month are now going to be what they call the sport utility uh, finish and you can see that the sport utility finish is just a little bit more kind of how it comes out of the forge so uh, whereas the older one that we're going to be testing is it wasn't really a mirror finish but um, maybe a little bit more of what you would have called a mirror finish. Also, one of the changes uh, as they're switching over to uh, the sport utility, you'll notice the length of the handle. So I think they call that a 36 inch handle and uh, the, the newer ones that you may be finding at a shop or on our website will be the 32 inch handle. Um, now, something else to keep in mind is that you can uh, also buy, uh, this is a Jersey Axe as well, but it does not have these phantom ears on there. So if if the phantom airs are not something that suits your fancy, you can save a few bucks and uh, get one of these. Also, um, this jersey style, it's got the same uh, weight head, but it will still come in the 36 inch handle length. I'm not sure why council decided to do that, but that is something to keep in mind. And just for interest, I know that I like to compare different axes, especially when I'm shopping. So I went ahead and pulled out, this right here is going to be an Amur, a council tool Amur filling axe. And uh, you can see it's not quite in the same, it's a little heavier, it's gonna have like a four pound head. It's gonna have the 36 inch handle and um, it's one of their premium line velvet cut lines so uh, its price is going to be significantly up but I just put it out here kind of so you could see uh, and get a feel for just what maybe some of the difference is so I'll just flip this one around a little bit you can't see too much we may do a review on that guy in a little bit let me go ahead and jump now I think we're having some battery trouble on the phone so we'll go ahead and jump and get to some of the measurements and uh, do a little bit of chopping with this uh, jersey all right, so we've got an overall length of just about 32 inches. We've got a uh, blade width here of about five inches. We've got a pull width of about an inch and a quarter. You can kind of go ahead and get a look here for uh, the wedge. It comes with the round metal wedge. It looks like a poplar wood wedge. And um, as all the council tools are coming right now, really tight fitting, hydraulically pressed, and uh, they just get really tight head fitment on these axes. I think that's probably one of my favorite things uh, on these, on the council tool axis. Every now and then you'll get, or especially some of the designs, there'll be a tiny bit of a cock to them. Uh, to me, as long as that's within reason, and it seems to be within the design, that uh, they're all pretty much even on that. But to me, I don't really care because the heads are on there so tight. I mean, you're not talking about any loose fitment, but anyways, I think you've gotten an idea there for how tight that head is and for the forging lines, you can see the council or the sport utility uh, finish there, stamp CT logo on one side, USA on the other and uh, fine, fine looking ax. And we'll go ahead and put this guy through its paces here in just a second. So, as in all of our axes, um, we don't go around just chopping down uh, trees. We have basically an endless uh, amount of um, grown-up brush around the homestead. So, uh, this one right here is a perfect example. We've got an old pond that never held water. Uh, had one of the wettest uh, Januarys that we've ever had. So, it's holding a little bit of water. So, I'm not really going to limb this guy up after I take it down. I'll take a couple of these limbs off here first so I can get in here. But uh, I'll come back after this dries up and maybe we'll do a nice limbing video with a smaller hatchet. But anyways. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get to chopping. I'm a little bit out of practice, and this is pretty hard. So uh, the angle is not my favorite either.
Alrighty, so I'm taking a bit of a break. This uh, mulberry is very hard. Uh, if people are interested, it is um, related, closely related to Osage Orange. A lot of Midwest people may be familiar with the orange wood on Osage, uh, bow makers especially. And uh, in England, uh, mulberry, a lot of longbows were actually made out of mulberry. Of course, it's a little bit different variety, I'm sure, but um, you can t see just by taking a cross section of it where it's been split and when you pull it apart you can kind of see it just tries to hold together that's one reason why it's so good for bows but anyways I'll go ahead and get back to it All right, so couldn't get a good swing on the back cut here, but I think it's about time to go ahead and start in and I may switch back, but I think this should do it right here. I've got a fence behind me, so. So there you have it, very pretty wood. I've turned some bowls out of that that came out just phenomenal, greenwood bowls. Of course, they kind of warp up, but look amazing. All right, so this mulberry was a little tough, but it was one of the bigger trees that I had that I wanted to chop and don't want to waste any trees. Um, but let's go ahead and chop. I've got a smaller uh, hackberry, kind of give you a comparison on what we're looking at with this axe. All right, so that hackberry was a tad bit, uh, so to go ahead and finish out, we've got these phantom ears on here. To my way of thinking, now I was not in a large uh, con confer tree where I may have been sinking my bit in, but I think they're a little bit too far back to really negate very much of them actually benefiting a whole lot. But they look cool on here. And uh, even in some of these harder woods, or some of the soft woods rather, like this, I really didn't get any sticking. It's a fairly narrow grind. I don't have a angle on here, but fairly narrow grind if you can see. And I didn't really have any sticking issues. Um, Overall, it was a good weight. I'm a big guy, but I don't do a lot of felling. So um, if you were experienced, you might want to jump up. But uh, this right here is going to suffice it for almost anybody's felling needs. You can choke up on it. You probably saw I was choking up on it quite a bit <clears throat> just to take a little pecking action. It worked good for that. I like that pretty well as well. So 
My overall impression is I'm happy with the steel on the council tool axis, the fit, the finish, and the use. If you're looking for an all around made in America axe, I think you'd be very happy with one of these Jersey patterns. The Jersey pattern is very similar to other American patterns, uh, the North Carolina, you know, down the coast, little variations here and there, but um, a great American axe. And I think you'll like it. Check out, make sure to check out our website, check out our other videos, subscribe, ring the bell, and we'll see you in the next video.